are live. Welcome to Daredevil Season 1 Thoughts. I am really glad I finally got to this show. Holy crap, it is just as good as everybody's been telling me. Okay, so, spoilers for Season 1, and before I get into the specific stuff, I want to say the order in which I will do the Marvel Netflix shows, because there's some overlap, and, you know, I've read that it doesn't make sense to just, you know, just watch the Daredevil seasons, because you're going to miss stuff from the other shows, and, you know, at first I was fine with just watching the Daredevil one, because he's coming back, he's getting, I don't know if it's going to be like a fourth season or a new show, we'll see, but, you know, I'd like to see the others come back, but anyway, for now, I have watched the entirety of season one of Daredevil, and I am watching the rest of them in the order that they premiered on Netflix, and watching one video, bleh, one episode per day, so on average, two weeks between videos, and yes, obviously, when I get to the, there's like one season where it's ten episodes, I'm probably going to do that in a week. And one where it's eight, I'm definitely doing that in a week. There's no reason for me to spread that out over two weeks. Anyway, so yeah, after Daredevil Season 1, there's Jessica Jones Season 1, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 2, Iron Fist Season 1, The Defenders, The Punisher Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, Luke Cage Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, The Punisher Season 2, and finally Jessica Jones Season 3. Now, I intend for this video to be shorter than my usual full season thoughts video because back pain. So I'm going to start by saying I love every single episode, every single season of this, every single scene of this season. It's full of interesting characters, great character moments, impeccable acting, strong writing, solid cinematography and editing, fantastic action choreography, tremendous storytelling, immense tension, compelling stories. Honestly... My biggest problem is, it's practically my only real problem, is the sexualizing of women in situations where they're not intentionally getting into a sexual situation. There's nothing wrong with sexual situations, but yeah, I'll, I'll get more into it as I get into the episodes. And honestly, it's nowhere as prevalent as one might think. You know, at, at first I was like, oh god, this is this is another... Blade the series, isn't it? I love that show overall, but wow, is there a lot of sexualizing of women that is just, yeah. So, I am not going to be comparing this on overall quality to the Disney Plus MCU shows. They're just too different. I don't think it makes any sense. The, yeah. But in, like, in a lot of ways, the show is a lot better than, and I still love all those shows. So, that brings us to the very first episode into the ring so let's see. right and i want to make clear i am only going to be spoiling things that you know i might spoil some stuff from mcu movies but not ones that came after this show so you know I guess up to and including the 2014 MCU movies. I will not be spoiling anything later, just in case someone has not watched past that and is watching this. So, yeah, we see the traumatic blinding origin story and basically get that out of the way immediately because we really don't need to spend... I've, I've also seen others say we really don't need to spend a lot of time on that. It, it's fairly... Like, there are unique details... But it is fairly straightforward superhero origin story stuff. You know, something tragic happened. He got powers out of it. And the, you know, he starts... I guess this show is not completely... This season is not 100% certain if it's a heroic thing or if he's doing it to work out anger. And, like... Yeah, I, I would say by the end of the season, you know, it has, 
you know, it says that he's a hero, but yeah, he starts doing vigilantism and yeah. And the first thing we see adult Matt do is go to confession, talking about how his father lost more than he won, but never got, got out. And that's clearly something that inspired him. And his grandmother, his father's mother, said, be careful of the Murdoch boys. They got the devil in them. Trap him in a corner. Let the devil out. I'm not seeking penance for what I've done. I'm badass. And smash cut, human trafficking. And what the guy says says to the women, scream all you want. Nobody gives a shit down here. Yeah, about that. And, you know, Matt heard because of his super hearing. Very cool fight. Daredevil, but I, I guess I should call him the Black Mask versus the human trafficking thugs. He ducks and dodges out of the way of multiple gunshots. We get a few throws of the iconic... I, I, ah, crap. What are, what are they called? I'm, I'm just going to go with staff. I know that technically a staff is longer than what he uses, but yeah. You know, he throws it, one, he throws it multiple times. One of them, it ricochets. Love when, they, you know, it doesn't do that a huge amount this season, but love, love to see it. And Daredevil tells the girls how to get help, and, you know, they hesitate, understandably, and he shouts when they do, and that does get them to... You know, it's it's like a necessary evil. Obviously, he doesn't want to be shouting at them. And he sits atop the guy in charge, pounds him over and over. I see what he means about letting the devil out. This is a lot grittier than the movies, and I am here for it. Obviously, the movies are going to make more money if they're made for a PG-13 audience. But on Netflix, you can track a large audience with something that would be an R if it, it was in theaters. Actually, yeah, when I start up an episode, it says 18+, plus, which... Yeah, that's that's appropriate. I really love the intro sequence with like this red liquid, I don't know if it's supposed to be blood, running down surfaces in New York, which, you know, like something touching a surface is one of the ways that blind people see. You know, like if you read Braille, you're touching surfaces. So, yeah, I great. I really like it. I love it. And I like Foggy from right away. I was a little worried that they were going to... Like, I know some people thought they went too far in the 2003 movie. I've personally always liked... You know, yeah. The, sh the show so far is a lot better. But I still like that movie a lot. I know some people felt they pushed Foggy too far. I'm really glad they, they weren't too scared of, like, making him... Yeah. He's, he's not just this boring guy. And Karen... You know, I, I knew about Karen Page from the comics. It's... I, I'm not sure... I haven't read the very early... Well, I read, like, issue one, but I didn't read... I don't think Karen was introduced in that one. You know, I haven't read the comic that introduced her. I just know that she's kind of important in the comics... But yeah, introducing her via a murder investigation, and she's the first client of Matt and Foggy. Seven hours, that is, yeah. And Matt listens to her heartbeat, trust, trusts her that she's innocent. And the guy shown live feed of his teen daughter calls her and is blackmailed. I really love the relationship between Matt and Foggy. And we see the cop attacking Karen is the guy who was blackmailed. She screams, and yeah, that attracts enough attention that he can't finish the job, and he's released after some pressure from Matt. And... Yeah, and, and when Karen and Matt talk in his apartment, he points out that their first move wasn't to kill her. And puts out that means you have something they want. And, you know, she claims she doesn't have the file anymore, but he can tell she's lying. Let's see. We don't say his name. You know, I, I thought that was a really excellent way to just very gradually build up the, yeah.
Why is this a problem? Every time one of these guys punches someone through a wall, our margins go up 3%. This is different. I believe the man who did this might actually appear on the show. And... Karen is attacked by Vance. I, I thought they did a really good job. Like, ultimately, he doesn't have a lot of screen time, and he dies by the end of this episode. But you get a sense of who he is. You know, he was the one, when, when they blackmailed, when Wesley blackmailed the cop, you know, Mr. Vance, give us a wave, and he does. And you see, I don't, I don't like Mr. Vance's methods, but he is effective. You know, that, that kind of thing. Just, yeah. And we get a brief flashback to Matt's childhood. And, you know, his father motivated to keep him studying. And we get a badass, bloody, bone-breaking street-level fight scene in the pouring rain. And, you know, she says, you can't trust anyone. And he says, then we tell everyone. Since Karen did nothing wrong, she's not going to face trouble for that. No, like, let's hypothetically say that she had, like, uh, hurt someone in the process of stealing it, but she didn't. You know, she she took something that didn't quite belong to her, but she didn't, you know, she gave it back. She gave it to the, to the press, you know, so, yeah, that's a, a quite clever... And Karen agrees to work for free for them, and she serves Grandma's true love, virtuous husband, Lasagna. Great ending montage, the guilty suicided, so there are no loose ends. You know, the cop, the blackmail cop, and Vance. The, and we see, like, the, the organized crime... Or... Yeah, yeah, we see some of the, the organized crime doing crime stuff. And Matt boxing. They know he's out there. He's trained to become ready to fight them. I do, yeah, one thing. The guy that Daredevil sat, Black Mask sat on top of and like punched over and over. Like, I, you know, his nose is broken, but that's it. Like, I would expect like really, um, ah, what's it called? Like his face completely puffed up and swollen and, and stuff. Like, I mean... I think they should just have him need to be replaced. Maybe it's his, it's his brother, so it's still person. Like, show him in the hospital, like, completely destroyed, and you see his brother there, like, furious, like, he's gonna... D d Black Mass is gonna pay for this. You know, that, that kind of thing. You know, that was one thing, and there's... I think it is my... Maybe the next episode after... But yeah, there's one episode where he gets really badly injured, and, like, Claire has to patch him up, and then he's still able to beat up a bunch of guys at the end of the episode. That felt... I, I get it. It's cathartic, for sure. I, I enjoyed watching it. But it's like, would he really be able to do that, you know, so soon after? Yeah. I, I do take issue with some, some people say, oh, you know, he's like, he never gets hurt. He gets hurt, like, constantly. He's, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, so we see that Gao is a drug kingpin, not to be confused with the kingpin, and all her workers are blind. At first, I thought it was the you know so they can't steal, but you know the in a later episode they also say you know oh it's nobody pays attention to them. No nobody's gonna think they're trafficking drugs. But yeah, this was an amazing pilot. You know, excellent pilot sets up the core cast of the show. Matt, Foggy, Karen, Flashback, Dead Dad, The Confessional Priest, Wilson Fisk, Wesley, the other heads of organized crime, and their interpersonal relationships. It shows Matt as Daredevil beating up criminals and saving women's lives from organized crime, and the pro bono lawyer getting innocent people off. I, you know... Right from the start, I knew I want to spend many hours with these characters, and I looked forward to doing so, and so far, it's been worth it. And, let's see, then. Yes, you know, it, um, Matt and, and Foggy are hired by Wilson. You know, I, I think... I think it might be in part a warning, like he's telling them, 
not to go after him, not to try to defend people who survive his crimes, not to try to prosecute people who work for him. He's telling them he knows who they are, he respects that they're capable, but if they mess with him, they lose. You know, look at how much of a power play it is. You know, Wesley goes in and he's like, oh, right, that's the woman you got off the, you know, you made sure she wasn't prosecuted for murder. And, you know, he knows everything about them and he doesn't even give them his name. You know, he's he's totally trying to intimidate them. And, yeah, that brings us to episode two, Cut Man. And, yeah, Daredevil is found in a, Black Mask is found in a dumpster and Claire helps him. No MCU movie that had been released when this season premiered had an MCU hero as messed up as we see Matt here. The one who comes closest is Steve Rogers at the end of Captain America 2, and that was because he allowed Bucky to keep hitting him. Matt is a street-level hero who gets beaten up because he's fighting regular people up close and with his hands. He's, like, very frequently outnumbered. And he grabs her when she tries to call, but he also can't walk to the door. And... I'm really glad we see the relationship between Jack and Matt before Matt lost his sight. A child takes a sip of scotch at his dad's order and stitches up his dad's face. We are definitely in a grittier corner of the MCU than the movies. I like that Jack tells Matt to do his homework while he is stitching up his face. I really enjoy the interactions between... Karen and Foggy, really all of the, the cast, but like, you know, at first she just hears him and like after a few seconds she's like, I gotta tell him, this is just, you know I'm still in here, right? And, you know, he like walks out and he's like, did you hear that? No, the correct answer was yes, and it sounded amazing. Well, I went with the lesser lie. <laughs> Let's see. And, you know, yeah, he figured that she left because it's late, but she isn't leaving because of her trauma. This is a show where pain hurts, where there are consequences. And, you know, to be fair, there was, you know, Tony has PTSD in Iron Man 3, so it's not that the MCU had nothing, but... Let's see. I really love that Karen isn't innocent. She tells harsh jokes along with Foggy. She goes drinking with him. Are you a doctor? Something like that. Okay, so she's not Dr. Oz. And she points out she'll be arrested if he dies at her place. So he does tell her what's going on. And, you know, we saw at the end of the pilot in the montage that the Russians kidnapped the kid. And now it's confirmed yeah they did it to lure Daredevil you know when I first watched it I was like why are they like if there's if they make their money off sex trafficking why do they need like a 10 year old boy but it was to lure out Daredevil you know and the the 10 year old boy is easier you know it's it's an easier um hostage yeah let's go with hostage for them to deal with than a grown woman and it's also, like, that's really going to piss Daredevil off. You know, if Daredevil is willing to beat up these guys for, like, grown women, imagine what he'd do when they take a kid. So, yeah. And, you know, Matt tells Jack that what he's learning about Braille is a smart ass. You know, I, I really like, you know, Jack is like, wow, one, one of these days you're going to be reading braille faster than I read normal and Matt is like oh I already do you know at the time he's barely he's learning the letters and he's saying yeah I, I read better than you do dad Let's see. and you know Matt needs some knives is that it they're for cutting vegetables not a knife fight are you sure you're a New Yorker and he knocks out the undercover Russian cop with a fire extinguisher to the... Jesus. 
and Foggy tries to make Karen feel better, telling her who the guys are in the bar. Has to admit, at least one of them has a rap sheet. She just doesn't want to go home, and it's in part that the bloodstain won't clean, which I'm told is an actual thing in real life, and that she was attacked and almost killed in her own apartment. How can she ever trust anyone again, feel comfortable anywhere? And, you know, basically... The way I see it is that over the course of this episode, she, you know, Foggy helps her to trust, uh, you know, because, like, he's not, you know, he's he gives cigars to, to old women, so it's not like he's, he's not a saint, but he does want to help people. He does legitimate, you know, that's why he became a pro bono lawyer, you know, like, when Matt said that he doesn't want to work for the the big company like if foggy really wanted to he could have said well you can leave i'm staying i'm getting i'm taking the job they're offering us you know but at the end of the day he does have a heart now i also quite liked you know it's it's Josie's bar and uh, you know Foggy's like you know here we can drink for free and and Josie is like you absolutely cannot drink for free Let's see. on top of that you can take an awful lot of punishment without one complaint that last part's Catholicism yeah that makes sense you know it I, I've seen like I forget it's someone who worked on this set is like the most Catholic MCU show, and yeah, you know the the protagonist causes a lot of pain and takes a lot of pain. That's yeah, Catholicism in in one sentence. And let's there are plenty of great people who are Catholics. The what I take issue with is the overall Catholic faith. Let's see. And, you know, Claire has met people who knew about buying masks. Word is spreading. And Jack places bets to help Matt. And, and Jack calls Matt's mom, lets her know via machine that he'll need her. And Foggy and Karen both try to compel Matt to come to the door in each their own way. That was, uh, yeah, you know, because they think he is in there. Thank you. I need this. I really need this. The city is beautiful, and we transition to the ugliness Matt is engaging in. And Matt and Claire both wear masks, psychologically speaking. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you lie, I will know, and I will be unhappy. That's just how I answer my phone. And Claire tells Matt exactly where to cut to really hurt the guy. For a second, I thought that she was going to tell him, you're going too far. But she's like, instead, she's like, you're not going too far enough. And I like that later, you know, he points out to her, no, 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 you, the mask, what was it he said? The mask was for psychological effect. He knew that you were lying when he left the the door. When yeah, when when yeah, when when you talk to him at the door. And Jack is killed for costing the wrong people a lot of money. Two episodes in, I'm really loving how they're contrasting and comparing Jack with Matt. You know, this this is not an issue for singular people. It is generational trauma. And, you know, the, the show itself asks, is what Matt is doing the right thing to do? You know, will it actually work? Maybe not, but certainly something has to be done or nothing will improve in Hell's Kitchen. As everyone else who's watched the show, I absolutely love the one-take hallway fight. It's absolutely epic and with some strong build-up leading up to it as well. And according to Wikipedia, they took inspiration from the Raid movies. That's definitely showing here. 
I really appreciate that this episode took Matt away from Karen, because the way Karen interacts with Foggy is very different when Matt isn't around. In the pilot, every time Karen interacts with Foggy, Matt is around, and we do get to see how Karen interacts with only with, with Matt when Foggy isn't around in the pilot. That is it for this one, bringing us to the third episode, Rabbit in a Snowstorm. Really great Mr. Egg. I really thought the guy was just clueless, but he just needed to get so close so he could beat up the thugs and the, the guy in charge. Like, at first, he really comes off as just, you know, I want to play some bowling. Is this, you know, this place, I mean, that guy's bowling. If, you know, so he goes up, uh, can I get, you know, and she's like, uh, we're, we're closed. That guy's bowling. You want to go, uh, you want to go ahead, uh, you want to go ahead and ask him, be my guest, you know. She's she's used to like yeah. There's a there's a one of the guys who's big in organized crime is bowling right over there. What am I gonna do? You know, and he walks up and and like still you know he's like yeah well. So you you guys are bowling? Can I? You know and and yeah. Once he gets close enough, he starts beating them and yeah. Love the bowling beatdown of the thugs. And I gotta admit, the the 36, old, 36 hours earlier, and, you know, I guarantee you this will not jam up. And it goes back, and it jams. It was a funny expectation subversion. I'm not sure it had a point beyond being funny, but I can, I can work with that. That's, yeah, it was funny. It was... Yeah, I, I did not at all expect for that to be the thing. And I certainly didn't expect it to be such a short chronological jump. And Healy beats the guy in charge to death with a bowling ball, hides the gun, accepts being arrested, and asks for a lawyer. It is what it is. Is it? Is it what it is? Kings don't have bodies in the trunk. Tell that to Macbeth. And we meet Ben Urich, and the mob guy tries to compel him to stop trying to figure out was maybe Wesley. I, f I forget, but yeah, you know. I, again, I like Ben Urich in the movie. This is a more interesting Ben Urich. Sorry, Joey Pants. I thought you were working for free. I did for a day. I really love when Wesley comes in the law office and Foggy tries to be open to him, but Matt immediately tries to cut through. Wesley shows he knows things about them, including that Karen was their client, appeared to have killed someone. And Matt follows him to the car undetected, decides it's going to take the case. I like that, you know, points out that Ben wants to write about Daredevil, but as you know, the the editor, I think it's you know, Ellison doesn't, yeah, doesn't want him to. And you know, when Foggy talks to Healy, it it's very clear he's familiar with a number of court proceedings. I really love seeing Matt pressure people for information, both Wesley and Healy. And Karen is being sued, or, or rather, it's, is it lost, or whatever, you know, there are consequences for her going to the press instead of the cops. And, or, you know, they, they yeah, they try to pressure her. Technically, there isn't something really wrong with And, you know, Ben goes to the hospital, and, you know, his, his wife... Yeah, she needs a proper hospital, and the, yeah, you know, they're, they're having, he's having trouble getting to, to let her, yeah, getting more time in them for her. And, you know, yeah, some, some doctors and some reporters are taking notice of Black Mask and its effect on the organized crime families. 
I appreciate that we're actually seeing the very first times Matt is representing people and doing the Daredevil thing. And let's see. Yeah, you know, I, I guess, you know, Wilson wants to see if he can own the lawyer duo as, you know, he wants to own all the organized crime. Clearly, he can use good lawyers. Every so often, someone working for him stands trial. And Matt uses the heartbeat lie detector, finds the juror who's being blackmailed, beats and threatens the blackmailer. And we again hear that people know very little about Wilson. Which is, it's it's very clever because that is an extremely effective way to, you know, how do, how do you fight someone when you don't know who they are or where they are or exactly what they're doing? You know, you, you, all, you know, for a while, all Black Mass can see is the effect of what is being, you know. I love the monologue Matt gives to the jurors. And... You know, Daredevil attacks Healy. He does get the name Wilson Fisk, but Healy is so scared that he suicides afterwards. And we get our first look at Fisk at the art gallery. And, you know, Vanessa comes up and has some great lines about art and ends up, you know, asking, how does it make you feel? It makes me feel alone. And I, that's such a great, because... The, the line, like at the time, we don't really understand exactly what that means, but I, f I forget if it's the very next episode, but yeah, over the course of the season, we come to understand what it means and why that's something that he is drawn to, because he is, you know, he's standing perfectly still looking at this very, you know, painting, and... Yeah, you know, we, we come to find out why the, yeah. I like that Karen is still trying to, you know, she, they took down Union Allied, but there's more, you know, who, who was really behind it? There's, yeah, she doesn't want to let it go, and really the entire season, I guess, she doesn't let it go. Yeah, yeah, she she finds out that Fisk is behind it, and then that's who, she, yeah. The fight between Daredevil and Healy was awesome. Like, we kind of knew that eventually the two of them would fight. Like, when, when Matt is representing Healy, you know, like, we know that the... Ah, what's the word? We know that it's not that he thinks that Healy should never have to face any consequences. And, you know, we knew that this fight would be good because we already saw how good fighters they are separately. You know, both of them, it's it's not just that they, you know, they find someone weak and beat them. They go up against people who normally beat others. And that brings us to the fourth episode in the blood and we immediately get a sense of how nasty prison is and the prisoner rips bones out of the dead prisoner who is chewed through by rats and that was the background of the two Russian mobsters in charge no wonder they're so ruthless and Later in the episode, one of them remarks that they went from princes of Moscow to being nothing overnight. And that's obviously something they don't want to happen ever again. And Claire is fixing up Matt. He put the dumpster dumped guy in a coma, and he'll live, even knowing about it. And he has her put in her number in the burner phone. As... <laughs> For me, you shouldn't have. It's not for you. <laughs> and she suggested body armor, which, you know, by the end of the season he is wearing. And Wesley is clearly actually shocked when told that Daredevil knew 
Fisk's name, but he manages to contain himself. The the guy does really great acting. Like he, I don't think does he ever raise his voice. It I, it's basically always in the face, and and like slight like his voice will change slightly, but yeah, because you know he can't afford to lose control of himself. Let's see. And you know one of the Russian brothers says. Tell Mr. Fisk if, if he wants a pound of flesh, he can come here and carve it himself. And we cut to a wide shot, and we see all of the Russians watching intently, ready to join in if it escalates to a physical fight. Just to clarify, you know, this, this is not like, oh, the two of them against Wesley. No, no, no. There's, there's maybe ten people in the room, and all of them are ready to do serious violence. And let's see. And the Russians speak in Russian and bring the guy out of the coma. And that's, yeah, I mean, I don't know with certainty, but I feel like there's a reason why doctors just don't just inject you with something to bring you out of a coma. You're probably supposed to, like, that's probably not super healthy but they're like well we need the guy awake so and you know some of the russians check out claire's old place not happy to find she's clearly left you know the uh, uh i believe she took all the clothes for example so that's you know okay she didn't just like she's not gone for the night she is gone you know she she left like knives and and dishes but you can get that you know the clothes is a bit more like yeah you know the yeah the clothes it means that she's staying over at someone else's place she doesn't expect them to have clothes in her size but obviously they're gonna have like food and yeah but santino the kid shows up in the doorway we already knew he was too curious for his own good I, I appreciate that it's a show that doesn't feel the need to handhold the audience and explain everything. Like, we just see Santino. We don't even see them, like, going up to talk to him. You know, later, later we do see that he's been, you know, that they, they hit him. But, you know, when, when we see them go for Claire, we, you know, we put two and two together. And, you know, I like Fisk going in to, you know, talk to Vanessa uh, and you know the the let's see first yeah he asks if they could you know if she would join him for dinner that very night and which is uh, you know yeah that's he's very forward but yeah you know if if the woman is into you that's that's a good way to and and you know they yeah I, I did get the sense that she was interested. And the uh, yeah, you know, when when she says no, he just starts walking away. And, you know, this is the part where like a number of people would be like, ah, well, I mean, if he's not gonna ask a second time, that's but no, she you know, she's confident enough that she asks him, you know, you know, you're what, you're not gonna say that you're not going to offer to buy out all of the, the art pieces so that I can go home early. A guy actually tried that once. And then he points out, which is also why she didn't go for it. You know, she said a guy tried that once. She doesn't say another guy used that on me and it worked. And then he says, a woman who can be bought isn't worth having. And, you know, basically, that was all she needed to hear from him. She just wanted to make sure that he wouldn't, yeah, that he wasn't the kind of person. And we know he has money, you know. It's not like he can't afford to buy out all of those other pieces. And she knows that as well. You know, he's clearly rich. And... Yeah, and, and Karen went to the auction. She's, like, drawing the face of the guy who tries to buy the remnants of Allied Union. And Ben shows up to warm her off it. And, yeah, like, she is she is not quite careful enough. She really wants, you know, the things that she... 
yeah, she she wants to get to the bottom of this. She wants there she wants there to be consequences, but you know, Ben has been on it for longer, and yeah, he doesn't want her to make that kind of mistake. And Black Mask talks to Santino. I like the detail that he speaks fluent Spanish. As far as I know, there are a lot of Spanish immigrants living in Hell's Kitchen. Which we also see on the show. You know, there's also... Uh, what was her name? Selena? I feel like... Yeah, you know, the... the yeah. And, you know, Fisk says that things haven't changed enough for his taste in Hell's Kitchen. And, you know, Vanessa says, it would scrub away the character. And Fisk says, you must not have grown up here. Or you, you haven't grown up here, have you? So, something like that. We get a little of his background. And we see that they've beaten Claire really badly. Not, they're not supposed to kill her until she gives them answers. And Daredevil cut the power as an intimidating tactic. Very Batman. And yeah, it goes with the rampant corruption on the Force. And I believe it is true to the comic Daredevil as well. You want to know his name? Ask him yourself. And she laughs. And just, yeah, wow. And Black Mask takes them out one by one, pulling them into the shadows. And he took out one of the guys with a flying tire into the face. Yikes. And Claire takes a baseball bat to the guy. And it's clear that Daredevil was intending to get some answers out of him. But he understands that she's extremely scared and goes to comfort her. And Karen confesses about the office equipment to Foggy. Who yet again brings out the butcher story. And... Yeah, I like that, you know, Claire convinces Black Mask that he is making a difference. And one of the Russians actually approaches Fisk in person at the restaurant. And we see maybe a dozen guys get up out of their seats in the restaurant, moving to protect Fisk. And Wesley and the Russians speak. Wesley has a great monologue about the past. And, you know, the the... Wilson calls Wesley, and Wesley says, oh yeah, in the passenger seat. And, you know, and then we find out why he asked specifically, why he needed to know which seat. So he could tear open the door, you know, just yeah, tear him out of the car and beat him eventually to death, slamming his head in a car door. And we get several shots of Wesley, who doesn't look at all upset at all the violence. Like, he's almost like, is this going to take much longer? This, uh, okay. You embarrassed me in front of her. And he tells Wesley to send the remains back to his brother, knowing it'll start a war. And it's, again, such a great... Like, at the time, you know, when I first watched it, I was like, he wants a war, but, you know, then we find out in the next episode, he doesn't think it's going to be between the Russians and him. And that brings us to the next episode, World on Fire, episode 5. And there's some exquisite focus pulling as Claire studies her bruised face and body in the mirror. Let's see. And then with her back turned, you know, she takes off her shirt and Matt does some chiropractic examining of her. And in the pilot, Karen took off her shirt in front of Matt, figuring since he's blind, he won't see it. Which, yeah, I... I like I said, I don't love the, you know, women on the show becoming sexualized for the male gaze. Not that of Matt, but of the presumed straight male viewer. There isn't anything inherently wrong with the character being sexualized, but a lot of straight men perceive a sexualized woman as lesser than one that isn't sexualized. And, you know, yeah, I think every time it happens in this season, which is not that many, I think maybe four overall, so something like that. You know, it's never, it's never in service of characterization. You know, Dexter, the show, would also sexualize women against their will, but at least some of the time, it is actually in service of characterization. Let's see. 
you know, so yeah, I hope in, in season two and three, maybe they either stop doing that or they start using it for characterization and such. Or just have, like, it's fine to have, like, a man and woman, you know, I'm not sure if the show's gonna have an outright sex scene, but, like, a scene that's where it's clear they're about to have, yeah, yeah, you know, Marcy, uh, you know, Marcy and Foggy clearly had sex in, in one episode, and that's fine, because it tells us, you know, like, basically, he wants to get her to help. And, you know, that's, that's the price, you know, she, when, when that happens, she just thinks of him as, you know, she even calls, says booty call, you know, she thinks of him as just that, you know, so yeah, you know, that's a scene that tells us something about the characters that we would not know if not for the fact that sex was part of it. Or are you one of those billionaire playboys I'm always hearing about? When you're thinking of Batman, easy mistake to make. I know, it was a reference to Tony. And I do want to clarify for those who might not realize, the reason I put Batman Begins back there is not that I... Oh, I am aware that that's DC, this is Marvel, but there's a lot of similarity between Batman, especially Nolan's, and this show's Daredevil, which again, I think is, you know, it's not every version of Daredevil, but it was the Frank Miller, the, the version that brought some life back to the character, is what I've heard others say. And Wesley goes to the surviving Russian brother, feigning ignorance about the dead one, and because of the planted evidence, Russian now believes Black Mask killed his brother. And considering their Black Mask's brutality, it is credible. So that's why Fisk was happy to start a war. And I really love, you know, when when the crime heads meet, I love that, you know, this guy doesn't mind that the Russian was murdered, only that it was done without consulting them. She's like, you know, kill whoever you want, but if you kill someone that important to us. You have, you know, she's, there's no sympathy there. It's just that, you know, this could have a negative impact on them. It's, it's business. It's, that's always, that's all it ever is, is business. I love with a passion the Brian De Palma style long take of the camera panning the taxi cab with one of the Chinese runners inside and Daredevil outside. Also excellent fight. And... Miss Cardenas really gets our sympathy. I really, really love seeing Matt and Foggy fight for innocent people who've been wronged. And Matt hears the Russian mention Wilson Fisk, and the cops are corrupt, so they kill him, pretending he went for one of their guns to protect Fisk. That's also, the show does a really good job of, like, it's very clear why you know, if Daredevil is helping, this is why he's needed. The cops are not going to do it. There, Too many of them are corrupt. And... and I love the scene with Foggy and Karen at the prestigious law firm. At first, Marcy is trying to intimidate, but Foggy makes some excellent points for how their case is stronger than hers. And and the fact that he, like, he doesn't have to interrupt her as she's giving her a little speech because he knows that he holds the cards. And he's showing her, you don't scare me. I'm not, you can, go ahead. No, give, let me hear it. Let me hear it. I want to hear what you think you can do in this case, and then I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. I like when the, the Russian says to, to Black Mask, you chopped his head off, you know, he just responds, and now I want his brother. Oh, well, yeah, right. I forget what characters it, but 
a character set who chopped his head off, and, you know, Black Mask responds, now I want his brother. In this situation, he has nothing to gain by pointing out the truth that he's innocent of that. And, you know, Foggy and Karen help out Miss Cardenas. And the black guy tells the Russian enough information for him to realize it's Fisk behind it. Behind it. So he wants to attack him soon. And Miss Cardenas believes it's a date. And Karen suggests it is. And... I really like the dates between Vanessa and Fisk here. We, you know, they talk about the past, and he explains why he always wears the cufflinks. And he realized she had a gun in her purse, and she ends up trusting him so much that she hands it to him. You know, it is this thing of, like, basically the reason she brought a gun in her purse, there's... Maybe she thinks that someone is going to attack him or her because she's with him to, to you know to hurt him or she thinks that she's going to need to shoot him and her handing him the gun is you know saying I'm you know I trust you and I'm, I'm not gonna attack you I also really appreciate you know I again I'm not I have not read that much uh, I've, I've read some spider-man comics where Kingpin was uh, you know appeared but as far as I understand the comics Vanessa you know, at first she doesn't know that Fisk is the kingpin, and when she finds out, she's devastated. You know, I like that they made the change here that she is actually, you know, yeah, she, you know, he she finds out, you know, yeah, Fisk tells Vanessa the Russians were the ones who kidnapped that boy, they're now dead, and she says, good. You know, she doesn't think it's excessive. And, the, you know, she keeps going out with him after this episode, so she must mean that. It wasn't just that she was worried that he was going to hurt her, if she didn't. You know, she has the money, she could leave the country. And... And, yeah, Daredevil tries to attack where the Russians are, but one of the runners working for Gao suicide bombs the place. That's the level of dedication that she has from the people working for her. And, you know, in a later episode, she says, you know, she didn't blind them. They blinded themselves because of their faith. Which, by the end of this season, we don't really know that much about. But I'm guessing in future seasons, or possibly the Defenders, we will find out. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Damn it, I should have known that the show would hurt Miss Cardenas after making me like her so much. I really appreciate that we see, you know, this is an explosion that affects not only the people extremely close by, you know, like, that that stuff travels. You know, a, a lot of action shows and movies pretend like, oh, you know, if you're, as long as you're not, like, super close by, you'll be fine. But, yeah. And the black guy was in on it. He told Vladimir about Fisk specifically for them to arrange this attack. Wesley explains the subterfuge to him and us. And Daredevil catches up to Vladimir, but several cops train their guns on him. That brings us to the sixth episode, Condemned. And I really appreciate the episode immediately gets to what we want instead of cutting out, cutting away from Daredevil, dealing with the cops who we see are corrupt and are there to kill all witnesses. And Black Mask gets away with Vladimir, tries to convince him. And Karen and Foggy and Claire take care of Cardenas. And Black Mask calls Claire walk, you know, walking through helping Vladimir. 
pointing out that he's a link on the chain, not the be-all end-all. I really appreciate he does tell her before she starts helping him. It would be a betrayal of confidence not to, you know. Straight up, like, this this is the guy who paid other people to hurt you. You know, that's... She deserves to know that before she agrees to help. I did not expect the cop to radio for help. I thought that he would do as Black Mac told him and call them off. That was, yeah, very, very cool. And Vladimir does give Black Mask some info, but Fane's dying, so Black Mask lowers his guard and comes close, and they fight. And Black Mask does CPR on the... And Fisk on the radio to Black Mask, you know, Fisk saying they're the same. And the whole, just, yeah, such, such a great, because, like, you know, there's already been so many cops, and, you know, Black Mask has intentionally gone out and beat up people that he knew were, were criminals and such. So Fisk kind of has to try to, yeah, you know, to talk him down, talk, convince him to, to stop. And the police sniper on rooftop, you know, shoots some cops. You know, Fisk is making people believe the Black Mask is the bomber and a snipe, a, a cop killer, you know, so that he will be isolated and alone. No one will help him. And Black Mask and Vlad work together on the manhole, and Vlad tells... Black Mask about Leland, and since it's not the movie, unfortunately, it's not Orser, and makes a last stand. I, I thought it was a really great episode. Like, this whole... <laughs> I mean, it's Netflix, so I guess they don't do sweeps episodes, right? Because, they because like, all of the episodes premiered on the same day, so this felt like a sweeps episode, I gotta, I gotta say. It, like, from the very start to the very end... You know, this is this is all about this fight and the after, the, you know, the 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 bombing and the aftermath, and yeah, Black Mask. Like, if the he is he is completely he he has no options if he you know if he loses if he loses Vladimir without finding out about Leland, that's it. You know, he has no like that's his best lead right now, and. Yeah, the, the, you know, the cops just keep coming, and the, yeah. The tension builds incredibly well throughout the episode. And that brings us to episode 7, Stick. Who gives Matt some... Instructions, some of which he does stick to. Badass opening the titular stick, cutting off an arm, getting information, and then still killing the guy. You know, he he said he was going to let him live. You know, that, yeah, we get right there. Stick goes further than Black Mask does. You know, this is, you know, if you, re if you read the comics, you probably already know that Stick is the, like, I mean, the moment that I heard the title of the episode, I probably would have also guessed. The moment that I saw, and, you know, an old white guy who's blind, uses, you know, these East Asian weapons. Yeah, you know, it, it's, uh, the, ah, I hope I got that right. I'm terrible at geography. I, I mean no offense. But yeah, the, the, I, I don't know enough to say exactly what kind of sword. I know that one kind of sword is called katana. I'm not sure that, I don't, I don't think it was a katana. Anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's that stick. That's the guy who trained Matt to the all the yeah. So you know, but but yeah, he goes further, and that's something you know that the conflict between him and Matt in this episode. Now, let's see. yeah, Foggy believes the the news, thinks that Black Mask is a terrorist. Karen's not so sure. And Matt says that he deserves a legal defense. You know, it's a, it's a great, yeah. And the, what was the thing that I, ah, there was something else. Yeah, I mean, it kind of showed, you know, Matt, 
is just trying to he 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 knows who Black Mask is. I'm pretty sure he knows. So it's not you know, but Karen and Foggy, you know, Foggy, you know, like basically he believes what he hears on the news and it's not you know it's not that he's stupid we saw that with marcy he is clearly smart but he does maybe have a bias there and karen i mean if people believed the news then they would think that she killed the guy she was working with you know so yeah she's she's like this could be stayed, you know, th this might be someone else doing it, kind of, I, I really appreciate it, I, I, yeah, now, let's see, and I like that Foggy, you know, he saw the burner phone, and knows that you know what he, he saw the, the burner phone and then he was told you know oh, okay, get in the cab I'll, I'll see you later so he thinks it's a girl you know because that's also that's that's how his mind works you know if he had a burner phone it would be for a girl you know and and to be fair matt does kind of play into that you know and it's it's useful for him you know if if foggy doesn't know where matt has been the idea that he was out with a woman, that's a lot like, you know, yeah, that's that's going to be a lot better for Matt rather than Foggy, like, you know, it's not great if Foggy knows that he's out there beating people because then, you know, yeah. But the, the yeah, you know, Foggy calls, you know, he thinks there is a, Hottie McBurner phone, and then you know Matt says it didn't work out, and Foggy isn't like yes, he's like oh, I'm I'm sorry, buddy, that you know at the end of the day he is, you know they are friends at this point in the season, and Nobu and Leland talk. Black Mask approaches Leland but is stunned, and Stick comes to him. And, you know, we get a flashback of Stick helping Matt, you know, tough love. And, you know, Stick was gone for 20 years, which Matt really resents. And Stick, you know, grabs a beer bottle, flicks the cap off, making it ricochet and land in the garbage bin. So that's, yeah, you know, that's how good he is at the, yeah. And Stick does want Black Mask to kill, and Black Mask refuses. Are you going to kill anyone? I swear I will not kill anyone. And... And, you know, Karen talks to Elena, who agrees that, you know, the guy responsible should be made to pay for it. I quite like how they, like... Let's see... I forget what Elena says, but she says something, and, and Karen responds, Jesus. Oh, uh... I'm sorry, and you know, Elena has like, is, is it a cross or is it, I, f I forget, but you know, some Jesus paraphernalia on the wall, you know, and, and Elena's like, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's okay. And then she's, I, f I forget what she says, but I think it's like, she says something, something, and then shit in Spanish. And then she's like, oh, you know, I, does, does she do the sign of the cross or am I misremembering? Well, yeah, you know, she's like, really, yeah. I, I like jokes like that. Uh, that's, you know, if you haven't watched Blues Brothers and you like scenes like that, there's a there's a early scene. If you don't feel like watching past that one, you don't have to. But, you know, if you enjoy the movie up to that point, you're going to like the rest of the movie also. But at least treat yourself to that scene. It's, it's quite early. And there's nothing before it that you're going to absolutely hate. All right, so... I don't know, un unless you hate blues music, I guess. Let's... And, you know, Karen is attacked. Foggy baseball bats. Uh, or wait, was it the bat or was the ball? Ah, I, I forget. It's Yeah, it's been days since I watched it. But yeah, you know, and she uses mace against... I, I quite like, you know, he's he's worried about her. It's, it's sweet. He wants to make sure... That she's safe. 
so he brought a baseball bat. You know, it's it's very like it's so cliche. Like the the um, for sure a baseball bat can come in handy in that kind of situation, but like I mean if you're just, you know you're he's just trying to make sure these guys don't hurt her. Yeah, like a stun gun or ah, uh, I don't like encouraging people to use guns in situations where they don't absolutely have to, but I guess that is a situation where it might now nah, it's yeah. If if at all you can do without, do without. And we see the black sky is a child, and Stick fires an arrow, but Black Mask catches it, and when they meet again in Matt's apartment, he claims that he killed the kid, and they fight. But afterwards, we do see he still had the bracelet showing he cares all those years later, even though that was what made him leave in the first place. And... And Stick is debriefed by a mysterious man with scars on his back, who by the end of the season we still don't know. I mean, I've heard some stuff about season two. I could imagine that's where that's going to be expanded upon. Which brings us to episode eight, Shadows in the Glass. And we see Fisk getting out of bed, putting on clothes, the same cufflinks, and in his reflection he sees what I'm guessing is himself as a child. Uh, yeah, yeah, what we later see is himself as a child with blood on his face. And I saw Screen Crush suggested that that's every time he looks in the mirror, you know, which... Maybe he doesn't do that super often, but he has to, you know, in the morning, he kind of has to, you know, dressing himself. We can't go to Matt yet. How long do you think I should grow my hair? What do you think, Matt? Full ponytail? Quality save. Good cover. So what's the second rule? You do not talk about Fight Club. And we get a flashback to Wilson's childhood where his father Bill is very misogynistic towards Marlene, telling Wilson certain things to think and do. It's clear that he thinks he's instilling good values, but the toxic masculinity is harmful to both Wilson and Marlene. It's harmful to everyone. I, I thought they did a really great job there because that is, you know, He's old fashioned. He you know, he he hits women and children you know, he hits his wife, he hits his child. He you know, he thinks that that's an okay thing to do. And you know, he doesn't think that he should talk to his wife about money issues and and gets bad into debt, you know, it's it's a yeah. I I uh, really appreciate it. And it is like I can't imagine Fisk hitting Vanessa. You know, although he does, he hits Francis when he's unhappy about how Francis dealt with Wesley. So he does have some of that in him because it's hard to unlearn what your parents teach you, even if you hated what they did, hated when they did it. And the black cop syringes coma cop, fastest way to a man's heart. And we see that Wilson was attacked by another kid, Bernie. Marlene tries to be comforting, but Bill takes Wilson to Bernie, attacks him, pressures Wilson to kick him. And Wilson wakes up apparently having dreamt this, which suggests he may have PTSD. And Gao reveals she, sp she speaks English, but only in front of Wilson and Wesley. And, you know, Wilson speaks Mandarin, and she knew. How many languages do we speak? All of them, including Binary, Klingon, and Navi. And she sends away Wesley like she's his boss. And am I remembering it right that Wesley, like, he looks to Wilson, he's like, do you agree? Because you're my real boss, you know, and, and Wesley, Wilson's like, yeah, yeah. 
and she dresses Wilson down. He flips over a table, sends away Wesley, who brings Vanessa, and yeah. And we see that the white background was something his father made him face when he hit Marlene. So Wilson tells Vanessa, as the show tells us, he killed his father when his father was hitting his wife. She sawed him up in front of Wilson, then they dumped his body, and people assumed that Bill left town because he owed the wrong people a lot of money. And, you know, he, yeah, so he looks at the white wall, and now the white painting, it makes him feel alone, you know. And, and at first, that, that sounds like, oh, that's, that's so sad. Why, why do you want to feel alone? But no, it makes him feel, like, it's, it's, it's a way for him to shut out his father, because that's the thing, you know, anyone who has lost a parent will tell you, I know from personal experience, them dying doesn't mean that you're, that they're gone from your mind, your memories, your heart, and, you know, yeah, that he never really he was never able to process that. He, or, or at least, I don't know, I guess maybe Vanessa helps him process it in this, by, by talking, you know. Yeah, I, I could see that. And, yeah, it's a, it's a great, like, uh, what's the word? You know, you can understand why he, why he's as violent as he is, why he's as ruthless as he is. And we get a voiceover from Ben, who's writing an article exposing Wilson, but then Wilson goes on TV, so he deletes the article, and Matt throws away his laptop in frustration. And that brings us to episode 9, Speak of the Devil. And we open on an incredible fight. Let's see. And let's, uh, and Matthew talks to the priest who realized it was Matt who came to confession and to talk about Jack Murdoch. Yeah, they talk about whether the devil exists and if he's important. Am I done talking? First stick, now his priest. Matt has a way of interrupting father figures with annoying questions. He was pretty smart alecky to his father, too. And Nobu wants the block that Elena lives in. And... Let's see. It was really tense when, you know, Matt is talking to Vanessa, hoping to get information on Wilson, and then he walks in. And... We go back to the fight and see it's Nobu. I really appreciate that Fisk is so complex. I mean, essentially, he does believe that any block in New York where poor people live, there are people getting traumatized by their poor parents like he was. You know, he doesn't see that there are Elenas in there. He thinks everyone is Bill Fisk, you know, and, and why wouldn't he? That's his only experience. And, you know, he's not going to look at numbers and stats a lot of people are very hesitant to do so, even though that is where the truth lies. We we have to look past personal, um, yeah, we, you know, who was it that, I forget his name, but there was like this debate where um, uh, Hassan Piker, you know, explained to the guy that, you know, you can't go up, you know, anecdotal evidence does not trump actual, you know, empirical evidence, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, to, to make it clear, I, I'm not saying that Wilson is, is stupid, just he is, you know, he is what his parents made him. He, yeah, he, he has the violence of his father, the... The, the willingness to go far in order to do something that might ultimately be good of his mother. And I really like that we see, you know, Matt opens the box where his father's stuff is. And at first we just see, oh, that, you know, 
he still has his father's stuff right there in a box. And he lifts the, you know, revealing that his suit and sticks are down there. So every time he puts on the suit, he's doing it for his father. You know, he's remembering that his father got killed. And, you know, and that's, you know, when, when he puts on the suit, he expects to find someone out there that would kill his father if given the order. And, you know, work his way up the food chain, maybe scare the guy he beats into never working for someone like that again. You know, so it's it's such a... And, and these scenes come very close to each other. The... The... Ah, the... the um, uh, yeah, okay. So they're in two different episodes. But yeah, in, in one episode, we, we find out why Fisk is so determined to do what he does. And then this episode, we... Yeah. And... Black Mask beats people leading to Nobu, and Nobu lowered his body temperature and slowed his heartbeat. I guess he assumed that Black Mask was a Yaucha, or predator for the uninitiated. And he sets Nobu on fire, and it's this thing of like, I guess, did he know that that was gonna happen? Because that is murder then, you know, if he knew that the sparks... Because he specifically threw the stick at the at the uh, lamp to to make sparks. I guess he was just figuring it would distract Nobu, or maybe he did kill him, figuring that that was the only way out. Also, amazing fight between Fisk and Black Mask. It's a shame Fisk only got there when Matt was wounded. I'm sure he would have loved to fight him in his prime, and he does. He does at the end of the season. And let's see. And Foggy is still really drunk and upset about Elena knocking on the devil's door. And Foggy thinks they're, that Black Mask hurt Matt and almost calls 911, but then, you know, Black Mask takes off the mask, which, I mean, he's not black. I guess that just makes him the... And that brings us to episode 10, Nelson v. Murdoch. I realize, again, I'm, I am going through some of these very fast. Just because I don't talk about a scene or a character or such doesn't mean I don't love them. It's I, I didn't write down absolutely everything, and if I don't rush through this, these 13 episodes are going to completely knock out my back for the whole weekend, so, yeah. Originally, I was gonna wait until my back was better before I did these shows, but I, you know, it looks like I will be able to watch every single Netflix Marvel show episode that that Matt Murdock slash Daredevil is in before they air the new one. I, I'm probably gonna, I, I hear he's gonna be on She-Hulk, so... I will be seeing him before I have watched the whole, same as, you know, yeah. But before they do an entire season on Daredevil, I really want to have watched all Daredevil before that. Again, I really appreciate it. We go right back to Matt and Foggy. It was so frustrating when I watched Lost, and it would refuse to go back to the thing that we wanted to see after a major revelation. I could have forgiven it if it was for a reason other than keeping us watching through stuff that we didn't care as much about. And yeah, Foggy feels very betrayed, understandably, and Claire stitched up Matt. And, you know, Matt refused to go to a hospital, so he presumably told Foggy about the burner phone before passing out and forgetting he said it. And that works perfectly fine. And also, you know, we don't actually see Claire in the episode or even hear her voice. That's perfectly fine. We, you know, all that needed to be was the, yeah. Again, imagine if that line wasn't there. It's like, okay, how is he even still okay at all? Like, Nobu cut him a bunch of times. And that's also, like, I really, see, violence can be, 
when when fiction uses violence, it can be very useful. We've seen him get hurt before, but Nobu managed to draw much more blood from him, and really, like, he, he was... Um, he, Matt, as far as we've seen, has not faced anyone else that, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, could do so much damage to him. You know, that tells us, because, yeah, you know, imagine if this was PG-13, we couldn't see wounds, we couldn't see blood, or at least very limited for wounds, and almost no blood. In more recent MCU stuff, they have shown a little bit of blood, but, yeah. Now seeing him, you know, seeing all this blood, like, this is, yeah, you know, what, and, and I think Foggy even asked in this episode, like, what, are you, you know, he, he could have killed you, what, you know, are you going to keep going out there knowing that you might eventually die, you, you know, what good is that going to do? And we get a flashback to the college years, and Foggy is a big fan of Matt from right away, same with the guy as a kid, and wingman stuff. Adorable photo of Karen on Foggy's phone. We later see it's also on Matt's phone when she calls. I think she like put her face between the yeah. I'm I'm not gonna imitate it. Don't worry. I do more than enough cringy stuff in these videos as it is. But yeah, I wanted to make sure to note that it was absolutely adorable, and you know Gao gives this really great monologue like such great writing on this show i love the the like i'm not usually one for dialogue shows but this one just holy crap they they make it work betrayed by ambition am i the snake or the elephant and you can understand why she's getting concerned first the russians now nobu like it's like <laughs> They're, they've been halved. There, there used to be four crime heads working for Wilson. Now there's two. That's, yeah, I understand why she's so concerned. And Ben sees his wife in the hospital, and at first she does seem to have improved her condition, but then she suddenly forgets what's going on, so, yeah. And... Let's see... Yeah, flashback, they're, they're graduating college. And I like that, you know, he, let's see, Matt graduated summa cum laude, and let's see, ah, uh, crap, I f is the other one cum laude? I, f I forget, but yeah, you know, in the pilot, when they, you know, both introduced, yeah, when they, when they got introduced to Karen, you know, Foggy made sure to note, you know, the, the summa part is just politics. And then this episode, Matt says, you could have graduated summa cum laude if you didn't drink as as many nights as you do. You know, so it's, you know, it's not politics. It's, I guess politics is just way of his saying, I was too drunk. Let's see. Which does appear to be, you know, he has, he's not like an alcoholic, but he drinks a little more and a little more frequently than he ought to. He he still, you know, he gets to work and he, you know, but it's still a, yeah. I, w I wouldn't even call him functioning alcoholic. He's not quite an alcoholic because he doesn't drink on the job. I, I don't know if it's clear, but I do have t t nothing but sympathy for alcoholics. Uh, and that brings us to... Hey, got a minute? Well, not a whole one. I've been saving up seconds all year. I need a time transplant. Like Karen, I jumped when Ben suddenly appeared, and I like, you know, he points out that the door wasn't locked. And later they do start locking it. And you know, he's determined that the hospice is terrible. But yeah, you know, some some places like that I I, I have heard they are. And Karen wants him to consider another place. And we see a flashback. You know, they're interns. Are you overtaking the job firm? I'm going to steal as many bagels as I can. Let me know when it's time to pick a bagel. He took a bagel! 
and we see a flashback to the first time Matt went out as Black Mask. It does not go flawlessly. I like when it cuts to a wide angle. It actually starts to look like he's going to lose. Like, we know he's not going to die, but he might, you know, crawl away out of there having, having failed. But he does manage to turn it around. I always appreciate they're they're so humanizing these early missions of superheroes because yeah it's it's kind of boring if they just if if they're perfect from right away and Ben and Karen talked to Marlene Wilson Fisk's mother so that was why Karen took Ben there and you know Marlene is going to tell them that Bill that Wilson killed Bill you know, once he, you know, that was one too many times that Bill hit Marlene. That's when Wilson decided, I am going to kill Bill. And Wilson gives a great speech at the party, but the drinks have been poisoned and Vanessa drank it. You know, at first I thought it was uh, revenge for Nobu, but ultimately it was, yeah, we find out. That it was different and the episode ends with foggy throwing the sign in the trash matt was unable to convince him that he was right which brings us to episode 11. the path of the righteous and i swear i'm not going to do the pulp fiction quote Fisk gets Vanessa to the nearest ER, though it is not in great shape. And Leland keeps asking if he should be checked out, and finally they agree. And I realize now that was an act. He was making sure that people realized, oh, I am very concerned about the poison. I, I don't think I, I wrote it down, but I really love the line, you know, in, in the, ah, I guess, was that the finale or the next? Second, one of the very last episodes, you know, Wilson kills Leland, and before he does, you know, he asks, "Why, why are you shivering?" And he's like, "Oh, it's it's really cold out here." Then why are you sweating? And Karen to Matt, look at you, you look like shit, Shane. And Karen explains to Matt and us how she discovered Marlene, which I appreciate because, like, you know, it's not a reach once we once we're told what it is. I, I appreciate that they waited to explain that until after the reveal because it was a really great reveal. It's a balloon. It's got a monkey on it. He can go with the one on your back. And Foggy slept with Marcy, who is impressed with the asshole thing he said, but then he ruins it. And she won't tend to his emotions about Matt, which, again, that's a, a great, like, she is, you know, by the end of the, the season, she does show that she has, she does actually, you know, Foggy said, you used to have a soul, and yeah, she, you know, she tried to suppress that while working for this big company, but Foggy manages to get her back to that so again the fact that this was just a booty call they're just you know they're having sex she is not going to you know help him with this issue yeah you know that tells us that for her you know sex is probably just another transaction and and i don't i'm uh, that might sound negative i'm not saying there's something wrong with that because it's her choice you know and and his choice he consented they, they both consented, but, she, at, you know, currently she does not, uh, you know, th this is, this is a man that she used to care about. This is, they used to go out, you know, and yeah, there's still some sexual attraction there, but she refuses to be a girlfriend, a supportive partner to him. And that tells us that right now, to her, everything is transactional. She is not interested in anyone's emotions. She does, she, you know, she puts her hard-earned degree to work for bad people 
they pay her foggy wants to stay over fine as long as they have sex you know it's there's no emotional because if she let herself feel things she might feel bad about helping bad people and again by the end of the season we do see no she does still have a soul she just suppressed it for a while so i really appreciate that i i, I think i would be very frustrated with the character of Mar marcy if they didn't reveal that no at the end of the day she is you know because it's they could very easily turn this into this nasty woman stereotype of just you know ah oh, she you know she 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 doesn't have emotions so she's a bad woman and you know sex is just you know she she has sex but she doesn't have emotions this kind of thing you know really negative misogynistic stereotypes and Leland and Wesley discuss who's behind it. I appreciate that they both make sense. Nobu's people or Gao are likely candidates. And Leland has to go talk to Gao. And by the end of the episode, we don't know who did it, but we do know Vanessa survived, and Karen talking to Marlene led to her shooting Wesley. Now, I, I, that, that's another thing. Every single episode, something happens. Something important happens. There is no filler episode in season one. I hope that continues to be the case for seasons two and three and four but it's disney plus so let's we'll see but the yeah like every episode the the investigation they get a little closer to figuring out exactly what's going on and get a little closer to having you know enough evidence that they could go public with it and we see how like fisk like, at the start of the season, he was fine with just business, you know, but with Vanessa, he is showing more emotion. He is, he's acting erratic, as Leland puts it. And, yeah, like, the, every season, cha every, every character changes over the season, and, like, the, you know, the, the end of the pilot, we, yeah. Uh, I guess not. in in the pilot we see all 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 of these you know we see the two Russian brothers we see Gao Nobu Leland and that you know they talk to Wesley not Fisk directly and by the end of the season you know the only one that's still alive is Gao and she is you know she she goes into hiding which I'm also get yeah yeah they really there's room for them exploring that in season two or three and you know the other organizations i can imagine they're in disarray without a clear leader because a lot of these you know they don't always make sure to point out because they're like if i if i say that guy is going to take over after me what's to stop him from killing me but if if no one knows who takes over after me none of them you know, as long as I treat them well, they're not going to kill me because they, you know, who's going to take care of them then? And Claire stitches up Matt, and then she's like, got a revolving door? Ladies come, ladies go? Karen talks to Ben. You mad, bro? And Ben explains about the party. Multiple fatalities. Toe is going to get cringy. Whoa, back up. Who's Doris? And Wesley's winded at Wilson Wins. The doctor tells him Vanessa will live and met meditates. Ah, uh, Matt meditates. And Black Mask knows about the black guy's knife and backup piece. And, you know, punches him. I didn't say get up. Jeez, Simon says got intense since I was in school. And he tells him about the body armor. He kept staring at me funny. Funny how? Funny like a clown? Like he amused you? Yeah, I can't impersonate his voice worth a damn, so I settled for Cadence. I really love this scene in w with Melvin. I, um, okay, so, you know, he goes in and he touches the, some of the, the armor. And then he hears the door opening. And the camera pans over to the door. And Melvin goes in and it's like, okay, he must have hidden because Melvin is not reacting like there's a stranger in the place. And the camera pans back following Melvin. Yep, he, he's gone. 
and you know then then you know i i know it's not it's not the most difficult thing to do but it is still cool when the camera pans off someone and then pans back and they're gone and you know just yeah it takes planning it takes practice and you know he reappears meters behind the guy and they fight holy crap the dude's strong and he says you shouldn't be here and at first it sounded desperate scared but then the second time sounds like a threat and then it goes back to desperate and scared holy crap a lot of complexity for a guy with so little screen time you know he explains you know betsy doesn't want me doing this and fisk said he'd hurt betsy if i didn't do it and that is you know there are a lot of people that you know he's like he um i don't know exactly what maybe he's on the spectrum there's obviously he he's not 100 percent like neurotypical and and the whole you know but he's really really good at specific things and that's true of a lot of you know neurodiverse divergent people so yeah and yeah you know betsy doesn't want him sell you know doing what he does and selling it to criminals but you know those criminals threaten him that he'll that'll hurt betsy so yeah who's fist gonna hurt melon betsy why did you say that name and yeah becomes clear melvin will make the daredevil uniform and karen is taken because wesley found out and fisk talks to vanessa about religion promises to hurt those who did this to her karen wesley talk destiny love of the city marlene what karen can do for fisk that she will be the last to die for i i quite like you know She's like, oh, so he's going to kill me? Fine. And, you know, he explains, no, no, no. He's going to kill your lawyer buddy. He's going to kill, you know, your reporter buddy. No, no, no. When there is no one else left, when there is no one left to bury, then he will kill you. And Karen grabs the gun. And, I mean, I guess that there would be no bullet in it, but... There were, but that has got to be a reference to Guardian Devil, and I am here for it. My one absolute favorite Daredevil story. And it's also my favorite story about the villain, but I can't say who, because it's a spoiler that he's the villain. But the villain absolutely love it. It's if if you if you like comic books at all and you haven't read that one and you like Daredevil, you gotta read it. It's amazing. Do you really think this is the first time I've shot someone? Holy shit. And she tries to clear the traces, runs off with the gun in hand. I guess, yeah, I guess she managed to, because they didn't, they weren't able to track her down. As a, yeah, I mean, she she was on the, the table, so she might have left some DNA there, but she wipes it off with her shirt sleeve. And let's see, she took the gun with her. Wait, or did she? She right. She wiped off her fingerprints from the gun, and she leaves the body there because it's not like she's in much of a position to get to a great place to dump it without getting spotted. So yeah, and it's clear from his face. Wilson Fisk has never had Wesley not answer the phone. He knows something is wrong. And in this episode, we see that Foggy lied to Karen about pulling a prank on Matt the first time they met. He was probably too embarrassed to admit that he worshipped the ground Matt walked on. And yeah, just I, I really love how paying close attention and remembering minor details can really pay off. Like it makes you appreciate things more about the show. You know, you don't have a line of like Foggy saying, so you knew that, you know, or something, you know, sometimes he lies, you know, he lies to make himself look better and, and that kind of thing. Not not in a like cruel way. You know, like, if, if Karen said, is it true, Matt, that Foggy did, you know, Matt's going to be able to take it. You know, it's not, it's, yeah. And that brings us to the penultimate episode. Such a fun word to say, penultimate. The ones we leave behind. And 
Karen washes the blood off as the camera leers at her. And the camera goes close to her eyes as she sleeps, dreams. I worried slightly that, like, the episode would just be a, you know, a dream episode, the whole thing. But thankfully, the only dream part was when Wilson grabbed her. And I'm glad they, you know, I'm glad they didn't spend forever before getting to the reveal of that. Because it works as well as a dream, letting us know where her thoughts are. You know, dream, yeah. Uh, segments of movies and TV shows that are dreams don't have to be bad, you know, so sometimes they are, sometimes it's just, like, Robert Rodriguez himself admitted that the dream sequences in El Mariachi are there because otherwise the movie wasn't l quite long enough for him to sell as a feature film for the, you know, he was just figuring, oh, it'll be for the Mexican, you know, video rental market, but, yeah here the you know it lets us know you know she tries to get some sleep and she has a nightmare that you know Fisk catches up to her you know it, yeah it works as a dream it doesn't make logical sense how could he possibly already know that it's her in the time that she's like they sleeping you know that's completely absurd but it is a great and and it is you know I figured it was probably a dream but I was still shocked to see him there I mean I guess ultimately there aren't that many scenes in this season of Fisk beating people sometimes to death or like, you know, punching someone or grabbing them or threatening them or such. It never, it's, there's not so many that we get used to it, but there's also, there aren't so few that we, that we ever think, oh, well, we've seen the last of that. You know, if, if you only do it once, then it's like, well, you know. Yeah, there, there just isn't quite enough. And... Let's... Foggy is leaving and Matt shows up. Burr! Yeesh! Only if you let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah, no, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. And Vanessa wakes up, won't let Wilson send her out of the country if he's not coming with. And since Wesley didn't tell anyone where he went or why, they have little to go on. Wilson does see he had a call with Marlene and make sure to get her out of the country. Fisk is coming apart. Leland tries to talk sense into him. I love the line, maybe now isn't the right time to beat your guards. Because at the end of the day, like Leland, I, I don't think he f himself physically hurts anyone, but he knows that's, you know, that's part of what they do. You know, that, that, this is the way of business. But he's like, this isn't the time for it. You should wait. We gotta find out what happened here before you beat your guards. And let's see, Ben. We have some more conversation. Matt briefly follows one of the blind delivery people, and then we get some very cool parkour from him. And apparently, the editor is named Ellison. In relation to Harlan Ellison, RIP, I love his writing almost as much as his demeanor. Are those for me? Until I get a better girl. You can't get a better girl. Damn straight. I love a woman who knows that she is enough for her partner. And, you know, Will Wilson is sad for Marlene, but he had to get her out. He thinks that the person who came to see her is an assassin that then intentionally went to kill Wesley. You know, it's a half-truth. And Ben confronts his boss. At first he gets a week's suspension, then that gets promoted to him getting fired. It's like, you're suspended, hand it your pad and pen. I can't have you on this story. I'm too close to it. The cops are gonna have a field day with this one. The mayor's been up about my ass about this all day. I can't have a loose cannon on writing staff. And Black Mask gets to the lab. I love the part where he beats up a guy off screen, you only hear it. 
and Gao sends all the, the blind people to attack Black Mask, and she's so strong, she knocks him back. And Black Mask talks to the cop, I'm not the bad guy, then what are you? I'm Batman. And you find out Gao and Leland poisoned Vanessa, and Gao goes home, and he's like, what, China? Much further than that. We will not talk again. And Wilson was waiting for Ben. Wilson to Ben. Do you think rambling on the internet will change anything? I feel personally attacked by that. And Fisk is furious about Ben talking to Marlene. He's not there to threaten, but to kill. And that brings us to the very last episode of the season. Boy, I'm going to miss this show. Entitled Daredevil. Yes. Final episode of season one of Daredevil is Daredevil. And we start on Ben's funeral. So yet again, getting directly to what we want. And the camera zooms in on faces of Ellison, Matt, and Karen. Could they have done more? Is this their fault? You know, at the time I thought Ellison was the one who took money from Fisk, but I guess that was one of the other people working there. You know, the other two maybe feel that they shouldn't have brought him into this, that, you know, the, the fight against Fisk was, yeah. And Ben told Doris about Karen. Karen thinks it's her fault. Boris is certain that it isn't. What was it she said? Ben Urich didn't let anybody push him into anything. And Ben had a life insurance because he was threatened earlier for a story. I really like that Fisk is a villain who has the right idea. Help the city that broke his father Bill led to Bill's cruelty towards Marlene and Wilson, but the wrong approach. Organized crime, violence. He and Daredevil both believe they're helping Hell's Kitchen. I love a complex villain. And Wilson knows Leland and Gao poisoned Vanessa. And it is, you know, who else would it be at this point? It is, yeah. And sends people out to kill Hoffman. Kills Leland. And... Fisk sends a team to kill Hoffman. I thought the guy handing out subs was going to be, you know, sent by Fisk, but, you know, other cops do. And right, you know, and the blood sprays on him, and, you know, he faces a, a gun, so he closes his eyes and doesn't want to see it. And then, you know, Daredevil's beating up the cops, but the only thing, thing we see is his face with his eyes closed. Very cool. You know, might also have been a budget issue, but... Sometimes good things come from limitation. Let's see. And opera plays during the montage as the FBI catch the black guy who used to be working for the Russians. I forget his name. It I know it was said a couple of times, but I forget. H Hadigan, maybe? Something like that. Some dirty cops. The journalist who took Fisk's money, so I guess that means Ellison wasn't taking money, because they certainly don't take him. Marcy's boss right in front of her, and she smiles, glad he'll pay, showing she does still have a soul. And Fisk and Venice argue, he's certain there's nothing they can do to stop the arrest. He needs her to do something for him. Do you understand everything I've told you? No, can you please repeat it on camera for the audience? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to find out what on earth he told her to, yeah. And Karen Foggy and Matt celebrate, and Fisk talks about a story from the Bible, The Good Samaritan. I always thought I was Samaritan, the Samaritan in the story. I'm not the Samaritan. I am the ill intent. And now he wants the, he doesn't want to save the city, he wants it to drown. An amazing shootout on the road, holy crap. You know, that that's where some of the money for this season went. Clearly, you know, the, the, yeah, very, very cool. And they switch cars, but Daredevil can hear the radio. And amazing, like the, the fight between Fisk and, and Daredevil, just absolutely incredible. And the cop doesn't arrest Daredevil, but does arrest Wilson. And the last shot of Fisk is him staring at a white wall in his cell, like the painting. You know, so he's he's not going to be... This is not going to devastate him. He's going to become even more focused. 
is, is how I read it, at least. And the final shot of the episode and the season is Daredevil headed out to help. You know, he hears the screams of a woman, so he's headed out to help. Amazing season finale, amazing season, amazing pilot. I believe I've said everything I wanted to say. Yeah, I, I, everything that the pilot set up, I feel that the season delivered. N not in a way that I, like, you know, I mean, now there's a power vacuum. That's not good, you know, and, and that's the thing. Like, he thought, oh, it's got to take out the guy at the top. That sometimes creates a power vacuum. I'm really excited to see what happens. I, I think it would have been disappointing if... Wilson Fisk, or Wi-Fi, as the kids call him, because he's reliable and he'll hurt you badly. He'll hurt you badly if you cross him. I I really appreciate that he ended up in prison and that almost all of the other crime heads are dead. And Gao went back, so yeah. Absolutely love this season. I am I am excited for Jessica Jones. I'm excited. I'm I'm excited for all of these Netflix shows. I really, you know, yeah. I'm really glad they came to Disney Plus because I don't know that I'm gonna get Netflix anytime soon. I've never had it. I'm pr I might never get it. I'm not interested. But yeah, that is. Oh, actually, just really, really quickly, I wanted to highlight. I don't have anything to to like. I I read the I'm to be stuff and and various but I wanted to I, I don't really have anything to and and critic reviews Daredevil on IMDb has let's see an 8.6 out of 10 33 and a half percent gave it 10 30.7 gave it 9 20.4 gave it 8 8.5 gave it 7 3.1 gave it 6 and the rest are you know 1.3 and, and below that so yeah this is this is a popular show, and it that makes a lot of sense. And on Metacritic, it has a 72 out of 100, 31 positive, 10 mixed, no negative. And on... Ah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. On the... On Metacritic user, it has 7 out of 10. 190 positive ratings to mixed 62 negative not everybody loved it and on the on rotten tomatoes it has issues with buffering there we go it has a 99% which makes it certified fresh 72 critic ratings and let's see, yeah, only one of them is rotten. And the and the audience score is 93% based on 8,867 user ratings. And I am going to briefly read the consensus. The critics' consensus for season one, with tight adherence to its source materials, history, high production quality, and a no-nonsense dramatic flair, Daredevil excels as an effective superior origin story, a gritty procedural, and an exciting action adventure. And yeah, I am I am so excited. I'm probably gonna watch either today or tomorrow, I'm gonna watch the first episode of season one of Jessica Jones, and I will let you know what I think of it in two weeks. So until then, well, uh, you know, hopefully, well, I won't see you. You'll see me next week, I hope. So catch you next week.